Okay, we're going to get started here. Thanks, everyone, um, for joining us. This is uh, Typhon Capital's uh, monthly outlook call. Uh, a lot of our customers have asked us to um, basically give them more access to our portfolio managers, be able to get everybody's outlook on a, a periodic basis, and be able to like see, touch, and feel them. So here, at least you could see them, maybe not touch, but... Uh, um, you know, we've got a, a good crew here and um, 2016 was a pretty tough year for the entire industry and I think we've been pretty responsive there. I mean, um, you know, we've made some tweaks and adjustments on the risk management side, some of our strategies that have been around for a longer time. Uh, that's been done under the direction of our CIO, Dave Klusendorf, who's going to tell you a little bit about the research and improvement process there. Um, and we've also added some, some really good talent in-house here. Um, so James Gallo joined the firm back in June. James waved to everyone. Um, he's the head of our Vulcan Metals Group, which is a three-person team out of New York. Um, we also had Neil Van Hughes join the firm. He is uh, the first member of our incubator program. He spun out of a prop shop and is now running a um, systematic S&P strategy. Uh, just started trading uh, about a month ago here. Um, and then we just uh, completed a joint venture with uh, Hubert and Damien. They are based in London. Um, Damien's up in the corner there, and Hubert's got the glasses on. And they trade a, uh, a systematic long short DAX futures methodology uh, that's really outperformed the DAX, even though the, the program's goal is to provide absolute returns and just use the, the DAX as its uh, implement, if you will. Um, and, uh, you know, we are, our kind of senior PMs that have been here for a long time are, uh, Jared Lehman, who stepped away from the monitor, but he's the head of our Plutus grain strategy and Matt and Mike Thompson who run our Proteus dynamic volatility program. And, um, they also run a Proteus, uh, overlay, which is, uh, essentially a, a dynamic tail risk, um, overlay. Uh, so with that, I want to ha hand it over to Clue for a minute here, and he's going to talk about some of the things that we've been doing on the risk management front. Thanks, James. Oh, and actually, Clue, sorry, before you start, I got to say that, uh, you know, for compliance reasons, that one, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future returns, and also that uh, we are recording this for compliance purposes, so if you're uncomfortable potentially being recorded, then you should disconnect uh, at this time. Clue. Thanks, James. You know, it's really been a great end to the year for us here. Um, what we've been able to do is really crunch our trading data and have made some really significant um, additions to some of our existing programs, which has resulted in, in better returns. Uh, it, it's, it's been exciting to see that develop and then of course to you know have some fruition with it all of, of you know just because you make changes doesn't always mean that you have the return to go with it but we've started down that road in a real positive way and it's it's it's, it's a good nice thing to see especially from some of our established pms who have embraced a lot of the things that have gone on and then right along with it it's been a melding of ideas and attitudes towards risk, towards trading that we have now shared and, and brought on with George, Davey and Hubert, you know, James it, it's, and Neil. It, it's, it's we're on one page moving forward and it really seems like we're all pulling ourselves together in the right direction. So it's really been an, a, a, actually a very exciting time and I'm very excited to see what's going to end up happening here in 2017. Thanks, Phil. You want to go into a little bit of, of the tweaks, the Plutus and Proteus, or you want the PMs to? Well, it's really, you know, I mean, like you, you could just call it, I mean, if you want to call it cash management, maybe that, that's not the right term for it, but really it is, it's the breaking down of the trading structure of going back and seeing, you know, where are the sweet spots for each program? Where do they excel? Where are the times that they don't? And then trying to obviously duplicate the times that's more successful over and over again and shy away from the times that it hasn't been as successful. So and that sounds simplistic. The, the actual math and breaking down of it, um, you know, that takes time and effort. Uh, 
but it, it's nice to have that type of tool in our tool belt that we can apply to any of the PMs that either are, exist with us or that you know we're taking a look at through due diligence. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Clue. And then we want to uh, unmute Jared here. Um, there we go. And so Jared is, Jared's been with the firm since 2010. He's the head of our Buddhist grain strategy. Um, I'll put its track record up on a second here. And he comes to us from Zionsville, Indiana. Jared, uh, why, don't, why don't you talk to, to everyone about, uh, uh, you know, what you've seen over the last couple of months and, and your outlook for, for the crop year. Yeah, thanks, James. Well, um, this last uh, um, growing season down in South America has produced, um, again, another uh, big crop. Um, we, we got the year started off um, um, on the wrong side of, of, of where we want to be, but we've, we've kind of made that up here in February and um, are, are excited about this year and the opportunities that are, that are um, in front of us. Um, while world stocks um, right now appear to be fairly comfortable, um, you know, just yesterday, um, although the news was maybe fake, um, the biofuel, you know, a 15% possible blend, um, you know, shows just how tight this market is with any hiccup at all. Um, cash markets have been um, fairly weak, um, but are starting to show a little bit of signs of, of life. Um, acre shift we're potentially seeing right now on the um, um, corn and beans. Um, you know, show that, uh, you know, with, with any hiccups at all with the demand structure we're seeing right now in these markets, um, which has just been outstanding, is going to, um, you know, possibly keep prices supported a little bit better than, you know, what, what we thought would happen here. And, and I think, we, you know, we've seen that the last couple of years as demand's grown right along with our uh, record production. Um, you know, the markets haven't gone quite as low as what a lot of fundamental traders have thought. And, and uh, for that reason, I think a lot of them have, have left the market. So, you know, going forward into the growing season here, um, you know, I'm excited. Um, I think that um, there's a few trades we're watching right now that I think have some, some good long-term potential. Um, after meeting with Clue um, in the middle part of January, um, you know, he, he's um, showed me a few things that I think we can um, adjust um, and have done so and have, have, I think, improved our success a little bit there in, in February. And I'm excited to, you know, continue uh, doing some of that, you know, in, in the, in the um, March and, you know, for the rest of the year. So I think my outlook this year is really good. I, I think we can kind of get back to more cons consistent historic cons um, returns, hopefully. Um, that's about it, James. I mean, I'm willing to take any questions. Yeah, why don't we open up the floor uh, to questions here. If anyone uh, wants to ask anything about the grain markets, feel free to unmute and uh, uh, fire away. Anyone on the phone or video? I know most, most of the callers here are unmuted. So, or actually they are muted. Okay. Okay, if, if anyone wants to ask a question, go for it. Oh, last call for Jared questions. All right, guys, well, thank you. Thanks, Jared. Okay, so now we are going to, uh, to move on to our, our new additions in London so they can get to bed at a somewhat decent hour here. Uh, so Hubert and Damien, they run uh, the Helos um, Deutsch, Deutsch uh, program. Um, so guys, take it away. Great, thanks very much, James. Uh, can you hear me okay though? Yeah. Great. Um, so this is the this is the, the program results you can see in front of you. Uh, as Speak up just a little bit. Sorry. Speak up just a little bit, Hubert. Yeah, sure. So as James mentioned, um, we just trade the the DAX index, the German stock market, um, and um, we were quite unique like that. We don't know anyone else who just trades the DAX. So we looked at all 14,000 trading days that the DAX has existed for since the 1960s. 
and we've detected um, three major patterns that recur in the present and we exploit those patterns profitably in, in, the, um, in the fund. Um, so you can see from the results that we've, we've made money um, every year since we started um, and made money last year, which was obviously a tough year for CTAs um, and with relatively small drawdowns. Um, and we think we will continue to outperform certainly because nobody else is doing this. The bigger players in the CTA market, as far as we know, are not interested in this particular field because the maximum capacity here is around 800 million and that's not big enough to satisfy them. And the other point is it, it is a, it's a short term trading strategy. Um, so um, being nimble um, as we are uh, suits the strategy and wouldn't suit the, the bigger guys. Um, so um, I might hand over to Damien to talk a little bit more about the algorithm um, and, and they give you a flavor for how that works. But as you can see, it's something quite unique, quite uncorrelated to every other strategy. Um, and that's, that's the main um, benefit as far as we're concerned for investors that if you hold this alongside other asset, assets, it'll, um, it should um, do, perform quite differently. I and mean, if you look at December last year, um, most CTAs um, had a very tough time and, and, uh, and we, were, we were a second best in, in uh, the CTA Intelligence Magazine's um, uh, awards there. So, you know, we do perform quite differently uh, month to month and year to year, and yet do register positive returns. So I might pass to Damien to talk a little bit about, um, uh, about the algorithm in a tiny bit more detail. Thanks, Hubert. Um, yeah, just to say, um, yes, we're very honoured, excited to uh, have been picked up. Doing lots of stuff with them going forward. Um, I, I've been a trader for over 17 years now, uh, and a lot of this, um, this uh, algorithm has been designed using my trading experience over that time with, in the equities and futures market. Uh, as Hubert alluded to, um, we just trade the DAX future. Um, it's the, the, the strategy I've developed does work over, over other indices, but actually we're, we're drawn towards the DAX because it is a very uh, liquid index. It's the second most liquid index here in Europe. Um, uh, and because it's a bit more volatile than, for instance, the FTSE and the Eurostox, it, it tends to throw off more trading signals. There's a lot of day traders within there. It tends to just have a higher average volatility, which, which suits our trading style. Um, we like to describe it as we're looking to trade the shape of a move. So the algorithm takes a view on if the market is an up, down or sideways uh, uh, move. And, and then from that, we'll look to predict how that move will pan out. So in, in any up move, there will be down days, although we didn't really see much, much of a down tick today. Um, uh, and down, down moves, likewise, there will, be, there will be strong rallies. So it would look to predict the shape of that move. Uh, we're holding positions for relatively short periods of time. Um, we trade only once a day, but we'd hold a position between sort of two and 10 days. Um, so, so we can, we can reverse positions quite fast. Um, uh, if, if the momentum moves against us, um, there's as well as being a price component to it, there is a time component, which we think is relatively unique within the space. A lot of the CTAs are obviously very just driven by the, the trend of a move. So as it starts, they get on the trend and then they hold it. There's, there's nothing they can do until they get signals to start taking them out of that move. Whereas we would look to mean revert within that based on certain time and price parameters. So what, what we're doing, we reckon, is relatively unique. I think there's no such thing as a unique strategy, but certainly um, there aren't many people uh, doing what we do in the DAX in Germany. I think there's a few people looking at, at the S&P, but, but we're um, quietly confident that we're on to, to something quite special here and, and, and confident of, of producing decent returns. Thank you. James, you're James, you're on mute. If oh, you're I'm talking. on mute. Sorry, there were ambulances going on here. Um, I'm going to unmute everyone else as well. If, uh, if you've got a question for uh, the Helios guys, uh, fire away. It's, it looks like someone's trying to talk in a number ending with five one zero six, but we can't hear you.
Interesting. Yeah, whoever's got that number, it, it's there's audio coming out, but it's not loud enough for me to hear. One more try. Okay. So no, no questions for the Helios guys. Okay, then. Well, thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to our Proteus Dynamic Volatility Group. Um, Matt and Mike Thompson. Here is their one pager on the left, and we're going to show you their daily returns on the right. Matt and Mike. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. So, yeah, so we're um, the Proteus guys, been with Typhon since. Uh, Late 2013, came from uh, EDF Man's uh, prop group in Chicago. I've uh, been trading, specializing in the volatility space uh, since about <clears throat> mid 08, late o, uh, to early or late 08. Uh, we specialize in trading VIX futures via VIX term structure signals. Um, and I think what's happened in the last couple of years, you know, we've been uh, in a period of low vol or vol suppression interspersed with a few. Uh, kind of event driven volatility spikes have been very transitory. Um, so, so the system's been giving us reliable signals over the last couple of years. And I think working with Clue has helped us um, position better or uh, trade construct better around events, uh, namely something like Brexit and the US election were our, our two problem areas last year. So I think those are cleaned up going forward. Um, and as far as what we see in the outlook, you know, we've been in a low vol environment now for really since uh, late 2011. Uh, we think that that low vol cycle has a chance to come to an end. And I think uh, the real hidden gem in the strategy is when we do get one of those high vol cycles, the most profitable time for our strategy will be kind of a 2008 type of market environment or 2011 type of market environment. Yeah, really what uh, the best environment for the, for the strategy on either side is just a trending vol market. So if it wants to be low and stay low with the steep term structure, we can make money uh, in that environment. And that's usually that's pr the most typical outcome is a low steep curve. Uh, the other side of that is a trending up volatility environment. We haven't seen that since 2011 as central banks have been, you know, all over uh, the market, but you know, at some point uh, in a, you know, 2011 type scenario, 2008 type scenario, if volatility is trending up with an inverted VIX curve, that's, that's very profitable for us as well. So we're looking forward kind of to making money that way as well. Awesome. I am, uh, there you go. I just want to show everyone a graph here of, um, the, the Proteus methodology, we went and put in a, um, a NYSE index with uh, um, an RIA out here that the Thompsons uh, do some overlay work with. And this is basically the long only signals of Proteus that, that's run in a dynamic um, tail hedge methodology. If you guys want to just speak to that a little bit. Sure. Uh, as James mentioned, Proteus is long and short uh, volatility. What's shown here on the right is our long only signals put together in an index that an RIA wanted us to use as an overlay over a book of their equity risk. So it doesn't take any of the short Proteus signals. So any periods where there's a flat line there, our program, the long only program would be in cash. Um, so it is a more efficient, more effective way to hedge than paying through the nose for option protection. Uh, so it's got positive return since uh, since VIX futures listed in 04. Whereas if you can compare that to kind of a rolling, you know, quarterly or even a yearly 30 delta type of S&P put protection that has a large negative expectancy uh, in terms of return. So it's a, uh, it's a high impact, very efficient uh, way to hedge risk. It works over high yield works over equities in the U.S., uh, works in European equities, anything with a high, reasonably high correlation to U.S. equities, this risk overlay is a nice, a nice way to lay off without paying through the nose for insurance. Yeah, and I would just point out that it's, it is a hedging index, um, but it is a more of a catastrophe hedge than a, it's not going to be a penny one type hedge where 
um, you know, the first 50 basis points of an S&P decline, this, this index is probably going to sit that out. It needs to be more of a systemic event like the, the types we were just talking about of a trending volatility environment over a course of, you know, a, a week or, or a month. So it's a bit more of a um, catastrophe hedge. No, I think Great. Uh, we have any questions for Matt or Mike? No. Okay. Well, we're going to move on then. Thanks, guys. Uh, next up is going to be James Gallo from our Vulcan Metals Group. Uh, one of our other PMs there is trying to get on, but uh, I don't think he's made it on yet. But uh, I'm Ed Smith is here. Ed Smith is here. Okay, cool. Well, Ed, Ed is our uh, uh, silver specialist, or sorry, gold specialist within Vulcan. Um, so him and him and James will give you their outlook on metals. And uh, take it away, guys. Hi, guys. As uh, James said, we run a three-man team out of New York, myself, Ed Smith. and uh, Speak up a little bit, James. Uh, as James said, we run a three-man team out of New York, myself, Ed Smith, and Anthony, who couldn't be with us today. Uh, the, uh, the basic idea of our program, we run a roughly 85% spread-based program, 15% outright spot price trading. Uh, we have different parameters that we trade within our three different commodities. Right now, we are neutral in all our commodities. Oh, we're getting some really bad feedback there, bud. On from me? I don't know. I'm going to hit a mute all and then unmute you and see if that helps. Okay, try that again. Okay. Am I better? That wasn't me. That's way better. Yeah, I think it was just an echo off someone's phone here. Okay. And Eddie, you got to unmute yourself. I'm not seeing you in the call list there. Okay. All right. So, uh, as I, as I discussed, about 85% spread trading, about 15% outright trading. The part of our strategy that we focus on is niche trading, a niche trading within niche trading, meaning we focus on specific spread activity through our years of experience and about six or seven basic tenants that we use to build our strategies. We are fully discretionary within our strategy. Uh, a, we use different parameters for copper, which copper tends to run a little bit differently, a more fundamental market where metal is actually used. It's used to build bridges. It's used for infrastructure. So we have seen a lot of a huge spike in CME open interest over the last uh, month and a half uh, 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 with the Trump victory. We've seen a lot of plays coming into the market with import tax uh, issues may come up in the copper market. So we've seen a massive spike up in open interest. How does that affect us? Well, that's what we trade on. We trade on open interest. And there's interest in markets. That's where we do our best. We do not care whether there is a huge short interest, a huge long open interest. We are basically taking the other side of speculative open interest and trading the core of our positions around that. Uh, regarding copper a little bit further moving forward a lot of fundamentals are in the market right now strike news uh, things of that nature so we're looking to see some physical uh, physical copper being pulled out of the market we really haven't seen that we have been mostly a speculative driven rally in my opinion but we shall see how that plays out uh, regardless of how it plays out we feel we're in a very good position because of the large open interest to uh, capitalize on those moves. Uh, regarding the precious space, uh, speaking particularly to gold, we're sitting about in the middle of our last year's range. So right now we're kind of at a make or break point as we get into the 1250s. If we take a peek above 1262 and then above 1267, we could be uh, having some real legs on our move. The open interest remains relatively low. The speculatives uh, can add many, many more longs to this market. So we are, we are cautiously watching it, waiting for the, uh, the next index roll, which will take place over the next couple of weeks. 
uh, regarding silver, silver, the interesting thing we saw in our last uh, last roll area, roll time, we didn't see a lot of deliveries in silver. So we're, we're keeping a close eye on that. Maybe there was going to be some uh, physical plays going on in the silver market that we can take advantage of moving forward. Uh, that's our strategy in a nutshell and a, a quick overview of what we're looking at over the next couple of months. Uh, we we're looking forward to a lot of active trading, uh, a lot of uh, trade, trades we can really sink our teeth into where we can get the volume off that we'd like to, to uh, have the best returns possible. Any questions, thoughts, anything? Okay, I just unmuted everyone. If anyone's got questions for Vulcan and also Eddie, feel free to chime in on uh, okay. gold. Thank you, Eddie. Yep. I'm good. Uh, the only thing is, uh, we are neutral at the moment. We're uh, presently short one unit of gold. That's all I really have to add to what James said. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Eddie. And we can see you too. Looking good. See my ashes? Yes. <laughs> uh, but, but do, we, do we have any questions for our metals guys? Okay, well, then we are going to go to the closer. Mr. George Michalopoulos from LA. He recently joined Typhon. Um, he was an energy trader at Citadel, did quite well there. Uh, before that was uh, Phi Beta Cap at University of Chicago. Um, and uh, he is going to be trading two different products for us starting in the next week or so. Uh, the Leonidas Macro Fund, which is a um, general purpose securities and futures based products that's going to be in a fund structure only. Um, and then also the Leonidas energy strategy, which will be a more traditional um, CTA managed account exchange traded um, energy products uh, only. So uh, George, uh, go for it. Yeah, well, very excited to get started with Typhon and uh, thank you for having me. Uh, the two, I would say the one theme that I think is most interesting to me right now that's going to define 2017 is that we have a very sort of bifurcated fat tail market. And I think everybody knows it, but how to structure a portfolio that can be patient enough to capitalize on it um, without losing money in the interim is, is the challenge. And so luckily, as a ball trader with a ball trader's background, um, I think the best way to, to do that is through options. Um, and so I'll talk for more on high level before I go deep into either strategy. But I think you basically need to be short for first order effects like theta in this type of market and collect. Uh, but you need to not expose yourself to the tail risk. So you need to be sort of long secondary effects. This is sort of the thesis that Artemis Capital is famous for, for espousing, and I agree with it completely. Uh, you want to be think long things like de vega, de vol, but you don't want to have to pay theta in the interim. And that comes from structures like short front end vol versus long back end vol. Uh, it means being short gamma and long vega, uh, not to bore you with Greeks and buzzwords from the options world, but uh, and I think you can get those type of risk profiles actually not just in options, but in certain structural markets like crude, which segues into sort of my energy strategy, in particular time spreads, which have a convergence feature um, that is based on the supply and demand dynamics, um, whether it be the U.S. market or the European market with WTI and Brent respectively. And by trading both sort of uh, grades, uh, you are able to hedge a lot of the tail risk that I was talking about earlier, because for example, you may have a view on shale production and thus be bearish, let's say, for example, WTI spreads. But you may not want to take the risk that the Middle East is going to go to war and spike crude to $150. And so um, you, can, you can get those type of risk profiles in a non-options market by being short WTI spreads, being long Brent. Again, just as an example. Um, and in the meantime, collect on convergence. So that's, you can augment that same strategy and express it through options, which 
has even more of that feature. Uh, and that's what we're really focusing. That's the kind of risk profile uh, that we'd like to build in, in Leo Didis. That's to say, one that is accretive just as time passes and gravity goes in your favor, but with higher upside um, on tail risk events. Of course, there's somewhere in the middle where you have bad outcomes because there's no free money, uh, but that's the trade-off that I like to take. And so that kind of brings it, that covers kind of the energy strategy. Uh, but on the macro side, uh, like to identify existing long-term trends. In particular, the central dominant theme in the last couple of years has been the U.S. and the transition to a higher interest rate environment on improving fundamentals, uh, which of course implies a stronger dollar. And the relationship to something like interest rates, which has a negative correlation to that exact catalyst of higher interest rates. Uh, but if you look at the long-term trends of both markets, you can see that there's a positive expectation in holding both assets. So by holding both assets, you can offset some of the tail risk uh, because they have negative correlation on shocks and interest rate expectation, macro events, uh, macro information that might get released like the jobs number, uh, while also still expecting positive, consistent p and uh, over time. So, and again, you can, you can augment that kind of concept with, with options. It also lets you sleep at night, which is, is a great way to keep your mind clear and make more money. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't want to keep over-talking the same theme, but I think we have to be uh, trading with that kind of expectation in mind, which is to say that, yes, I think very many traders think we're primed for some sort of large move uh, in either direction. The current thesis is a blow off top followed by potentially a crash, but timing that and positioning yourself for that um, is very difficult if you don't construct a portfolio that can kind of be agnostic to the day to day. Um, of course, you're going to react when something actually happens, but you need to be ready for it before it does. And I think this type of risk profile does that. And, that's how we plan on making money in 2017. Awesome. Thanks, George. And uh, I'll unmute again if anyone's got questions. We want one question a day. Someone. I, I know you're there lurking. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> okay well with that jared blinked what jared blinked jared blinked and nodded Who's... i thought that might have been a picture for a while it's todd by the way hey todd like it. it's just, uh... <laughs> jared's just stone cold man come on you know that <laughs> the ice man so nothing okay well everyone i um I thank you for joining us. We're going to throw this up on the website and Twitter um, you know, if anyone wants to watch it at a later date. And uh, feel free to send me any feedback via email. Um, you know, let me know what you thought, how we could do it better the next time, and you know, figure we'll probably do it another month or so. Um, but thanks for joining, and uh, have a good night. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. It's, it's over.